Hi Group 2! Today we will be sharing to you about our learnings in our prelim lecture under Dr. Francisco Ramos. It has a three topics that we will be tackled in this video. First, heritage introduction. Second, tangible and intangible heritage. And third, the heritage program of the government and UNWTO. But before we proceed, let me give first a short description regarding this subject. This course is designed to provide an understanding of the concept of cultural heritage tourism, theory, practice, history, terminology, and current issues of cultural heritage and tourism planning and management will be examined. Vamos turismo! Hi everyone, I'm Jed Anferni M. Salvador. So what is heritage tourism? Heritage tourism is a former type of tourism associated with the cultural heritage of the location or destinations, where tourism activities occurred according to the National Trust for Historic Preservation in the United States. Also, traveling to experience the places, artifacts, and activities that represent the stories and the people of the past usually involves visiting historical sites, industrial sites, cultural sites, military sites, religious sites, and museums. The overall purpose of heritage tourism is to gain an appreciation of the past as well to learn about the heritage destinations. Heritage tourism is supported by municipalities, local government, and non-government organizations. Truth promotion and tourist information centers in many countries and their local communities. Heritage tourism missions usually involves the restoration or conservation of man-made structures such as military forts and historic houses. So the following are the common activities of heritage tourism. First, Heritage tourism may involve simple sightseeing of scenery and visiting local museums that document the past truth artifacts and art. Second, it involves attending festivals or places that sell traditional products and build heritage sites and compass places such as monuments and historic houses. That's all for heritage tourism. Thank you for listening. Good morning, my name is Aira Peralta. I am here in front of you to discuss what cultural tourism is. According to UNWTO, or Cultural tourism is a movement of people or group of people for essentially cultural motivation. For my own understanding, cultural tourism is an act of a person or group of people to motivate themselves to learn and experience more about other people's culture, beliefs, history, and traditions. The good thing about cultural tourism is that not only it can help us strengthening one's identity, it also helps us improve and spread awareness about cultural understanding. With that, it is also helping not only us but also other communities who are rich in history. Not only that, cultural tourism helps other communities to preserve the heritage and their culture. Once again, I am Aira Peralta. See you! Hello, my name is Denise Jessica Francisco Janko. I will be discussing the difference between cultural and heritage tourism. Cultural and heritage tourism is an apparatus of monetary advancement that accomplishes financial status through drawing in guests from the outside. Such travel is engaged after encountering social conditions, including scene, visual performing expression, and extraordinary lives. The cultural tourism industry developments of people for basically social inspirations. For example, travel to celebration and other widespread development visits to destination and landmarks, travel to concentrate on nature, lastly, fables or craftsmanship and journeys. There is a clear difference between cultural and heritage tourism. 
heritage tourism is said to be place-based compared to cultural tourism. Heritage tourism is attached to the place, while cultural tourism is based on experience, with minimum or no emphasis. Hello everyone! Before I start, let me first introduce myself. I am Jeline Alvi V. Balgoba and I am going to discuss the importance of heritage tourism. Let's get started! So first is historical and cultural destinations as part of heritage tourism could play an even bigger role in getting the tourists to our beloved country. With the COVID-19 pandemic bringing global tourism to a standstill, millions of people in quarantine have been seeking out for cultural and travel experiences from their homes. Culture has proven indispensable during this period. The demand for virtual access to museums, heritage sites, theaters, and performances has reached unprecedented or the uncommon level. Next is heritage sites are meaningful sources of identity and inspirations for communities across the country. With carefully laid out programs and projects, they could also provide additional financial resources for local government units. Next is because each city has its own heritage site, highlighting this aspect goes beyond beautification. So in here, it shows love and pride for the country. So with that being said, the tourism and cultural sectors must continue to work together for a future sustainable cultural tourism. Marketing strategies in tourism are highlighting cultural expressions not only to address new audiences, but also to inspire responsible travel. And of course, heritage can be a platform for political recognition, a medium for intercultural dialogue, a means of ethical reflection, and the potential basis for local economic development. And that's all for the importance of heritage tourism. Once again, I am Jerin Alvivi Balcoba, and thank you for listening. Kimberly Aguilerbo. Natural heritage is the sum of element and biodiversity. It can be public and private natural areas, zoos, aquarium and botanical garden, natural habitat, and sanctuaries. Natural heritage can also be scientific and aesthetic. It provides stunning landscape and it contributes to economies, climate stability, and humans' well-being. Example of natural heritage is the Bataha Reef Natural Park and Puerto Princesa Subterranean River National Park. They are both considered as UNESCO World Heritage for its biodiversity and stunning beauty. The Bataha Reef Natural Park is one of the best diving spots where you can see almost 350 species of coral reefs and 500 species of fish. In Puerto Princesa Subterranean River National Park, is considered as one of the world's most impressive cave system because of its spectacular landscape, natural habitat, and wildlife. Also, they are both located in Puerto Princesa, Palawan. That's all for the natural heritage. Thank you for listening. Bye! Bye, Philippines! This time, I'm gonna show you what is cultural heritage is all about. By the way, I'm Rhino. In cultural heritage, is an expression of the ways of living developed by a community and passed from generation to generation. Where we can see mind artifacts like drawings, paintings, sculpture, or everything you see in the museum. We also include the historical moments, historical sites, um, and buildings, as well as the archaeological sites. And basically, it is all man-made. The Rice Terraces of the Philippines Cordilleras is an outstanding example of an involved living cultural landscape. It is named as a World Heritage Site by the UNESCO World Heritage Center in 1995. It has passed by UNESCO standards due to the blending of social, cultural, economic, physical, religious, and political environment. 
the Taj Mahal has long been recognized for its incredible beauty and architectural merit. It is composed of iconic ivory white marble mausoleum in Agra. Do you know, Taj Mahal is the second best world heritage site in the world and it welcomes millions of visitors each year. And that's it. Thank you. Maupay na adlaw! Ako ngaran kay Maika. I am here to enlighten you guys on what Mex Heritage is. Mex Heritage is actually a combination of natural and cultural values. Another factor here is that they contain elements on both natural and cultural significance. Now let's proceed to the examples of mixed heritage or the locations where we can actually see these kinds of tourist spots. The first one is the Roman Colosseum located in Italy. To give you some facts regarding the Roman Colosseum, it is a massive stone amphitheater known as the Colosseum. Um, it was created as a gift to the Roman people. Also, the Colosseum was built and a part of an imperial effort to revitalize Rome. And usually, this was used for entertainment venues such as hosting gladiator fights, animal fights, animal hunts, and of course, the mock naval battles. And the second location here is the Machu Picchu, which is actually located in Urubamba River. Now, it lies in one most stunning settings of any archaeological site in the world. Now, uh, Machu Picchu means um, old mountain or old peak. Now, it is made up of more than 150 buildings ranging from bath and houses to temples and also sanctuaries. Paghinay pirmi, malakat na ako, ayo ayo. Heritage Tourism is traveling to experience the places that represent the stories of people of the past. Examples of Heritage Tourism include visiting a museum or a historical site and eating the local cuisine. Heritage Tourism projects usually consist of restoration or conservation of man-made structures such as military forts or historical houses, places, or churches. Heritage Tourism is important because heritage sites are meaningful sources of identity and inspiration for the country. That's all, thank you. Good day everyone! I am Katie Andy Tumangia, a third year tourism student from University of the East Manila and I will be your attendant in this video. In this video, I will be sharing with you the topic about social benefits of cultural and heritage tourism. Social benefits of cultural and heritage tourism helps on building social capital by allowing the people to work together in order to enhance the community opportunities. And it also promotes preservation of local traditions, customs, and cultures. The UNESCO now recognizes intangible cultural heritage as being as important as buildings and do you know that the market experiences and traditional projects provide the economic support for keeping these skills and traditions alive? And they also promote positive behavior and in order to help improve the community's image and pride. And after that, it will lead to community beautification and it will also help build opportunities for a healthy and useful community relationships and partnerships. And for us students, it will also help in providing researches, education, and work placement opportunities for a student like us. And it also creates an enjoyable opportunities 
for both local residences and visitors attracted to the cultural arts, history, and preservation of a heritage site. Lastly, it boasts on local investment in heritage resources and amenities that supports tourism services. And that's all. Thank you for listening. Good day everyone, I'm Irish Roxette M. Santos and I'm about to discuss to you the environmental benefits of cultural and heritage tourism. First, cultural and heritage tourism promotes culture preservation. It may be natural or old sceneries from the past. Tourist sites that have value to people must be conserved for future generations. Even if it's tangible or intangible, movable or immovable. Second, not only does cultural and heritage tourism advocate cultural preservation, but also spread awareness about the tourist sites, attractions, and the significance of the area. Tourism plays a significant role in the protection and conservation of cultural property. Lastly, it helps uplift local residents and visitors to be mindful of their impact on the natural and built environment. It establishes opportunities enhancing their knowledge about the area. And that would be all. Again, I am Irish Roxette M. Santos. Mabuhay! Hello sa inyo nga tanan! Mayad nga aga, hapon, kagabi sa inyo. I am Jaya Chilicot, Alicante, Manala. I have learned during the prelims lecture is that tangible heritage refers to physical artifacts produced, maintained, and transmitted intergenerationally in a society. And also, the tangible heritage is all about everything that we can touch and we can perceive clearly our example of tangible but in heritage when we talk about tangible it includes historical places buildings monuments sculptures paintings and etc that we can see and touch everywhere but before i end this let me share to all of you some example about tangible heritage here in our province antique first are the churches that we have here, like Patnoon Church. Second, the handicrafts here, which is the Buri products, and many more. All of these heritage sites and handicrafts that we have here, we are thankful to human creativity and have a global cultural significance. That's all about tangible heritage. Kabay pa nga damo ka mga nabuol kag natunan sa akon nga ginhambal. Salamat gid sa inyong pagpamati. Kag halong ka mga tanan. Hi everyone! My name is Miyuki S. Villacorta. Jia talks about tangible heritage tourism and she said that tangible heritage is everything that we can touch and we can perceive clearly. This includes the buildings, historical places, handicrafts, paintings, and many more. But did you know that tangible heritage is divided into two types, the movable and immovable? First, let's talk about the movable heritage. These are national cultural treasures, artifacts that are considered worthy of preservation for the future. It is composed of archaeological, historic, ethnographic, religious, and artistic objects. For examples, artworks, manuscripts and documents, recordings, photographs, and many more. Polyarium is a painting created by Juan Luna. This is one of the Philippines' well-known historical items, and Luna spent eight months working on the painting, which which is now displayed in the main gallery of National Museum of Fine Arts. The other one is Menungo Jar, one of the Philippines' cultural treasures and early pre-colonial artwork. It was found in March 1964 in Manongol Cave in Lipuan Point, Quezon, Palawan. 
Next, let's talk about the second type of heritage, immovable tangible heritage. This is composed of monuments, group of buildings, and sites. They are human works that cannot be moved from one place to another. And let me give you examples for this one as well. Paoway Church is one of the oldest churches in the Philippines having completed its construction in 1710. And it was declared as a national cultural treasure by the Philippine government in 1973 and was then included in the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites Collective Group of Baroque Churches of the Philippines in 1993. Next is San Agustin, located at General Luna Street in Tramoros, Manila, built around 1571 and considered as the oldest church in the country and one of the four uh, Philippine churches constructed during the Spanish colonial period to be designated as the World Heritage Site by UNESCO. That's all for the movable and immovable heritage. Hello to everyone watching this video. I am Crystal Mayandri Caster. So guys, remember when we said intangible heritage, it is the opposite of tangible. Unlike the tangible heritage, an intangible heritage is not a physical or concrete item. Intangible heritage is that which exists intellectually in the culture. That is also identified as transmitted from generation to generation. It is constantly recreated by communities and groups in response to their environment, their interaction with nature, and their history, and provides them with a sense of identity and continuity, thus promoting respectful cultural diversity and human creativity. Basically, the local traditions like oral or written, music, dance, crafts, religious ceremonies, language, theater, literature, etc. For you to remember intangible heritage easily, just remember that these are the customs, values, traits, and skills. The importance of intangible cultural heritage is not the cultural manifestation itself, but rather the wealth of knowledge and skills that is transmitted through it from one generation to the next. That would be all. I hope that you have learned something. Thank you and have a great day! Marahay na adlaw sa Indugabos or in English, good day to everyone. My name is Amanda Kubako and to start for the assessment, the Department of Tourism is seeking a creative communication agency to help market the Philippine Heritage Projects that is currently under development today. According to the Tourism and Cultural Survey in year 2015, the number of cultural visit arrivals we have is continuously increasing compared to the total of foreign arrivals we have. And year 2013, the UNWTO and UNESCO launched a groundbreaking build a collaboration between heritage and tourism stakeholders along the Silk Road. And to support this, the roadmap for development was developed to achieve the same goals, which is a sustainable growth, heritage management, community development, and the cultural on the Silk Road Heritage Corridors. For the planning, I will be sharing five things that we have to follow or do to reach the goals. Number one, promote the Philippine cultural and asset. Number two, create publicity. Number three, create public interest for tourism. Number four, establish local regulations and guidelines. Plus, number five, focus on raising the profiles of Philippine destinations. That would be all. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Joanna Marie Ligutom from TF5A. In preparing, we have three points to know. First, the scope of work, second, deliveries, and last, the AVP or the audio video production. They meet with the Department of Tourism and the NCCA to discuss the direction of their campaign. They also prepare to visit the cities and provinces that will be designed as heritage sites and conduct research about the history and legend of that location. 
they also prepare for delivering their campaign by branding it, which includes the design of their logo and the creation of the title of their project. Move on to the marketing. The Philippine Heritage Project approved the 15 million pesos for the budget of the contract, which includes all relevant taxes, bank charges, and other costs that may be incurred during the process of the said project. Thank you, stay safe, and God bless. Good morning, and I'm Julianne Gaing, and we will be talking about the Vegan City Heritage Conservation Program, a tool for development. There are four steps, and we will begin with the first one, which is assessment. Hi, I'm Alexa Menes, and I will be discussing the first two tools for the development of Vegan Heritage. The Vegan Heritage Conservation Program includes enactments of several legislative measures that aim to safeguard and preserve the historic city. This plan was recognized by UNESCO for the best practice in World Heritage Site Management in the year 2012. Second is the planning. The city government allocated from the internal revenue allotment a share of 1% each for the development of arts and culture, livelihood, scholarship program, agriculture, and collective negotiation agreement. Next is the creation of planning scheme taking into account World Heritage Site boundaries and buffer zone and identifying allowable uses within the site. Also establishing of local regulations and guidelines. Next step is preparing. Under preparing, there will be initial actions. One, rebuilding of the public market which burned down in 1994. Second one is rehabilitated ancestral houses used now as souvenir shops, restaurants, hotels, enhancing the city's tourism program. The last step will be marketing. And under marketing, there will be a massive information campaign to raise awareness for vegans' rich heritage and history. There will be a series of public hearings and participatory workshops and all of this will be organized by the city and the local community. And that is all. Good day everyone, I am Leiko Paringit. Did you know that Vigan is unique among Philippine towns and cities because it is the country's most extensive and only surviving historic cities that dates from the 18th century Spanish colonial era? Undoubtedly, it is an urban center for remarkable visuals and architectural unity. In the national history of the Philippines, Vigan has played an important role. It was the center of the Basque Revolt in 1807 and the Ilocos Revolt in 1762-1763 led by Diego and Gabriela Silang. Vigan is the most extensive and only surviving example in the Philippines that shows Spanish urban planning of the early 18th century. Hello everyone, Marhaina Aldao. I'm Matricio Lasil G. Solis. My topic is all about the Silk Road Training and Capacity Building Program Assessment and Planning. For the assessment, the UNWTO and UNESCO launched a groundbreaking initiative to build closer collaboration between heritage and tourism stakeholders along the Silk Road. To support this, the roadmap for development was developed to achieve mutual goals for sustainable growth community development, heritage management, and conservation on the Silk Road Heritage Corridors. For the planning, it is focused on raising the profile of the Silk Road tourism through marketing, capacity building, and development activities that are sustainable, responsible, and internationally competitive. The UNWTO Silk Road Program is responsible for implementing transregional and transnational projects across a broad range of themes and subjects. The identification of tourism gaps among the member states, especially in relation to the promotion of the Silk Road as a tourism concept. Hi, good day. My name is Ayla May P. Baluyan. I'm here to discuss to you all about United Nations World Tourism Organization Silk Road Training and Capacity Building Program. For the preparing, the first edition of executive training was organized by UNWTO Silk Road Program in cooperation with the UNWTO, Timis Foundation, and the University of Valencia. And with the support of UNIDO and UNESCO, 
took place in October and November 2017 in Madrid and Valencia, Spain. Standards among Silk Road members by training NTA officials and university graduates in areas such as a national and traditional cooperation marketing, UNWTO and UNESCO, together with the heritage and tourism experts for the five participating countries, are developing a comprehensive and sustainable Silk, Silk Road Heritage Corridor Tourism Strategies, priority projects for developing tourism and safeguarding heritage across the corridors. Guarant That's all and thank you so much. Good day everyone! Before I start, I'm going to introduce myself first. My name is Ansel Corin M. Asuncion. UNESCO have five programs which activities are accomplished in different areas. Education, Natural Sciences, Social and Human Sciences, Culture, Communication, and Information. The International Program for Development of Communication and the Information for All program that supports an increasing multimedia content on the internet that will prevent being illiterate of people in that aspect. The access for information will give the foundation of knowledge and understanding. Some of their programs also are human rights. They are in support of human rights. As they quoted, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and in rights. They fight for discrimination that violated human rights. They are, they are addressing racism and in any forms of discrimination. Why do we need to fight for human rights? Because our world needs peace, unity, fairness, and equality to all, so that everyone can feel at home wherever they go. We need to speak up, stay connected, and listen to stories of others as it brings inspiration and lessons to all. That's all. Awesome.